This shoe is like nothing I've ever tried on before. In some good ways and some bad. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for my penultimate week of training towards the Yorkshire Three Peaks Fell Race. Today's vlog is centred on a pair of shoes though. I've had a big parcel turn up this morning and it's in this huge envelope. Now I knew that the North Face was sending me something out to test. I didn't know they were sending more than just the shoes though. So let's get this thing opened up and find out what's inside. Ooh, something bright green and what looks like a jacket. Wow. They've sent me the future light jacket and what looks like another jacket as well. This one is the Vetrix. But yeah, we'll talk more on the jackets towards the end of the episode, but I am chuffed to pieces with that. That's really kind of the North Face. So thank you so much guys for sending me those out as well. But this is what you're all interested in, the shoe box. Can I get a drum roll please? I present the North Face Flight Vective. Now, before we get into this, guys, this week we're going to be testing it on a number of terrains, different distances, and of course, different speeds. We've got a tempo session at the end of the week that's going to test this carbon plate and the rocker system. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the North Face. Now, it's not a company I traditionally looked at as trail running, always hiking, quality products, definitely an exploration, but never really running. Despite that, They've always had real high-end athletes. Zach Miller, Caitlin Gerbin, and the list goes on. And in the last year, we've seen some fastest known times destroyed, but no one knew what the shoe was. It was this little beauty. Came under the radar, created headlines, and we're now starting to see some videos surface on YouTube. Caitlin's is one of them, the Wonderland Trail. I'll link that down in the description. Really great watch. Then since the launch, Jonathan Alban even went away from his VJ pair of shoes to these to set the record for the CCC. So they've definitely invested a lot of money in the Vective range and I'm dead excited because regardless of how these shoes perform, I think going forward in the future, the North Face could become a really big player in the market. But what is the Vective range? Well, it's made up of three shoes. You've got the Endurist, their entry level high cushioned ultra shoe. It's got a standalone tongue, quite well padded in the upper, and it's the cheapest of the range. We then go up to the Infinite, bit more stripped back, more responsive, and much lighter weight. Again, it's got its own standalone tongue, and it's got no carbon plate, which is where the flight comes in. This is the one that's got the carbon plate, it's making all the headlines, and it's a booty style, stripped back, still highly cushioned, racer. Now I personally aren't a big fan of the booty style. I prefer shoes when they've got a separate tongue but we'll go into more detail on that later because I'm sure you're sick of hearing the same details in every review. But what's going to stand this one apart is I've taken all of their advice and half size down. Lots of people have been complaining about the lockdown in this shoe. I wonder if it's all down to fit. So by half sizing down, we'll get to see whether that is gonna solve the problem of ankle slippage and lack of ankle lockdown. We're also gonna test it in a speed session at the end of the week, a good three miles of tempo effort to see what the economy is like with this carbon plate and if it can make us faster on the trails. Right, time's getting on. Let's hit the trails and test this beauty out.
Welcome to Dolby Forest guys. We're just doing a six, six and a half mile run today. Try and get these shoes tested out. And I'm only a mile and a half in. And boy, do I have some opinions already. This shoe is like nothing I've ever tried on before in some good ways and some bad but we'll explain more on that in just a second as mentioned this is the penultimate week of training going into the yorkshire three peaks by the time this video comes out i will be on my taper i'm excited i'm nervous i think i've done everything i possibly can but we're injury free and we've got through the plan just as expected so i can't go into this race in much better condition Fingers crossed we'll be on for that air time of sub 3 hours 40 or at least sub 4 hours. It's going to take my very best to hit it, but we'll give it our best shot. As you can tell, I'm also testing out the Future Light jacket because we were forecast rain, but it looks like we may not get it, thankfully. But all I can say is very lightweight, breathable, comfortable and such high quality material. Yes, it is on the expensive side, but to be honest, I think it's worth it. And probably one I'm going to wear going forward in my races as well. Right, we're three miles into the run, guys. So let's get you a couple of out-the-box impressions. We'll begin with fit. I half-sized down, as mentioned. Usually eight and a half, went down to an eight. The fit is perfect. The booty style sock just seems to hug around my foot and there's no gap in the ankle, which is fantastic. Toe room, really surprised, it's perfect. I thought this was a narrow torpedo style shoe, not the case at all for me personally, and I have medium to wide feet, so most people should get on with these shoes perfectly fine and I've half sized down. Now that's really surprised me because a lot of people have complained about the wiggle room in the toe box uh, and the fact that it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I've really not experienced that at all. But coming back onto the fit, onto a slight negative, that booty style doesn't have an awful lot of reinforcement to be able to cinch the laces up and get a really good lockdown. My foot is secure, the sock style going half size down is a really good fit, but sometimes when I get onto uneven terrain, I do feel a little bit of a pinch in my ankles, like it's trying to work to correct its position. And I really don't believe that's got anything to do with the stack height. I actually think they've got the comfort stability ratio spot on in this shoe for the longer distance. I think you've just got to pick and choose what sort of terrain you're going to use it on. I was genuinely nervous about wearing it because of that carbon plate. I was worried it was going to be too stiff, overwork my metatarsals, my feet and my plantar fascia. But actually, it's really helped. It seems to be propelling me forward and giving me some bounce back. As you can tell, I'm quite excited about these shoes because I wasn't expecting to get on with them at all. But let's get these other three miles done and just see if my opinion changes changes at all as the run goes on. Just stopping for a minute guys because to be honest it feels like i'm always on the go so when i get a day off and i come out here i like to really take my time take it in we've got a bit of the breeze running through the trees really nice atmosphere it's quiet in the forest today so just soaking it all up while we're here a couple of thoughts on the lacing system really well padded through the tongue but if you cinch it too hard you can feel them pressing on the bridge of the foot a little bit 
that isn't an issue right now whether it will be in longer distance runs we'll have to find out in my longer term review there's also some padding in the heel which i feel does a very good job of stopping the heel slipping out others have suggested it doesn't really work that way but again i've half sized down so whether that's helped as well i'm not too sure right let's get this run finished up and i'll give you a few more thoughts about that carbon plate and the overall performance of the shoe on my first run out from the car Well, that was embarrassing, guys. Don't let it be said that I never show you everything. Uh, got a few cuts, but they're all superficial. A little bit on the finger, a few on the legs. I think we got away with that one. Going onto the grip, to be honest, it wasn't the shoe's fault. These are only three and a half mil lugs, but they are actually quite sticky. I found them really good out in the course today. This is very similar to what you probably find at something like UTMB, which is what the effective flight was made for. Now, as desperate as I am to talk about that carbon plate and the rocker and how they interact with each other, we're gonna save that for Saturday's run because I want to get a rounded view of how this works with a slow effort and three miles worth of speed because economy over a short distance and kick is very different to how it helps you maintain that speed. What I do want to talk about though is the arch support in this thing because I usually wear insoles just to help prop up my arch um, and stop that pronation in the knee. Not wearing them with these because I didn't want to affect the economy of the shoe on its first run. These insoles that go in have a little bit of arch support there. I don't know if you can see that. And with the rocker system combined, it actually props my heel up very nicely and has stopped my knees pronating. So I'm really excited about that. I may have finally found a pair of shoes where I don't have to wear those annoying insoles. Right guys, you're joining me on a Saturday speed session, but speed isn't really the right word. We're tapering now for the Yorkshire Three Peaks, so just a 15 minute warm up, cool down, separated by three minutes at tempo effort. The whole idea being we want to test out this carbon plate and the rocker system combination to see if it can make me more economic and faster than I usually expect to be. We had a run on Tuesday in the flight vective, did nothing to change my opinion of the shoe so far, really enjoying it. Then on Wednesday, we went out and did a massive hill session out on the moors. That was my last big run before the race. We tested the Innovate G210 there though. I wasn't using the Flight Vective because it wouldn't have been the right type of terrain. So if you're interested in hearing about that shoe, subscribe to the channel and that way you won't miss out. Coming back to today's test, I'm gonna have some soft, muddier ground to test the shoe out on in the warm up and the cool down. The actual tempo part itself is gonna be on hard packed trails. And I'm really curious to see what difference this carbon plate can actually make. Right, let's finish this warm up off and we'll get started. Three, two, one, go.
Okay guys, that's the session done. I'm gonna cool down, get back home, and give you some thoughts on this carbon plate and the rocker system. But before we do, a quick note on the flight jacket. Really impressed with this. When I first opened it up, I didn't think like it feel like it would tighten enough around the hood but actually it cinches from here just this little toggle um, and that just pulls it in around to your cheeks leaving the rest of it loose which is actually great because a lot of other jackets seem to rub for me around there having the option of just having that dangle loose is great I've not had any water go inside and the actual material itself is very water repellent you should still be able to see the droplets sitting on the jacket really breathable really comfortable and like I say I'm definitely definitely going to be using this going forward. Okay, let's finish this thing up and get back home. What a miserable day, guys. It's wet, windy and cold. So let's get straight to the point. Does this shoe perform better for having a carbon plate and a rocker system? The short answer is yes. Of course, it depends on what terrain you're on. If you're on moorland or boggy ground, it's not going to make a difference. But that will be the case for any carbon plated shoe. This was intended for the UTMB. I'd love to use it in something like a park run and go for a PB. I think it'd be fantastic on that hard packed, faster terrain. But how does it work? Well, the carbon plate acts as a spring. You'll see how rigid that is. Then the forward motion comes from the rocker system. It really does encourage you to get onto your tiptoes. I've noticed two sizable differences using this shoe over any other. The first is my cadence is massively improved. I've got a much faster leg turnover. I noticed it mostly going uphill where the carbon plate seemed to be doing a lot of the work for me and I didn't have to drop that cadence down at all. And the second and arguably more impressive because I didn't expect this, my form improved massively using this shoe. You'll notice from the two videos I'm about to show you side by side that my heel flick is much more pronounced in the flight vective. I wasn't trying to put this on, I wasn't even thinking about it, um, but that carbon plate just seems to give you that extra little bit of kick and bounce that makes you more economic and at least anyway gave me better form. And that's why I'm going to stay away from this shoe in my recovery runs where we need to go at those slower paces because it does encourage you to just pick it up a little bit. And some clarity on the lockdown issues I mentioned earlier in the video. In Tuesday's run and today's run I didn't have any issues at all. I wore a slightly thicker sock which meant that the tongue was more comfortable and I could cinch it a little bit harder. Didn't feel an awful lot of heel slippage either. Again I think half sizing down will sort your issues on that. I'm still a bigger fan of of the standalone tongue, but I don't think that the booty style system should pull you away from buying the shoe. I'm still really impressed with the overall comfort of the shoe and especially the whip in that toe box. It may look torpedo shaped, but that hasn't affected me at all. In terms of durability, I think it's gonna do exceptionally well. My only minor concern is this upper mesh, which is really nice and comfortable, could be prone to breaking down in poorer weather and with heavy use. So we'll find out more on that in my longer term review. If you guys want to catch that one, I'd suggest subscribing because it might be a little while before it comes out. I want to give it a really good test run. Right, guys, that concludes the review. The next time you see me will be on the Yorkshire Three Peaks Fell Race course. So wish me all luck, cross your fingers and toes, and I'll see you for that one. Thanks for following along, guys.